Starship V3. This is the long-awaited new era, and official updates so far suggest it could arrive as early as the end of this year. But is that really possible? When we look closely at the current progress, the pace at which SpaceX is developing the necessary hardware seems slower than expected. That makes the likelihood of a debut flight this year uncertain. So where exactly do things stand? Why might the first V3 launch happen later than anticipated? And what steps must SpaceX take to keep that timeline within reach? Let's explore these questions in today's episode of Great SpaceX. We all know that after Flight 11, Starship will officially step into a new era, V3. Musk and other reliable sources have made it clear that this transition is expected to begin later this year with the debut of Flight 12, featuring B-18 and S-39. On paper, that schedule points to December as the likely launch date. However, even with December on the calendar, the big question remains whether all of the necessary systems will actually be ready in time. While nothing is impossible, the chances of hitting that target will depend on SpaceX ramping up activity across the board. As things stand today, progress appears slower than expected, and that opens the possibility of the first V3 flight being pushed into next year. Let's begin with the ship itself. At the moment, S-39 has not even been rolled out. Some of its parts, such as the nose cone, have already already been spotted in Star Factory for months, but there has been little visible movement. It seems that SpaceX is waiting for all components to be ready so they can assemble and stack them continuously. That approach is efficient, but it also costs valuable time. We're now well into October. Even if SpaceX begins stacking S-39 immediately, the full process of stacking and integration will take about a month. This is not a typical build. S-39 is the first V3 prototype, and as with any brand new version, assembly will likely take longer than usual. Looking back at S-33, which was the first prototype of the V-2 era, the full stack required around 30 days. By that logic, S-39 will demand a similar timeline, if not longer. That means S-39 may not even be fully stacked until sometime in November. What happens after that? The vehicle must undergo a full round of cryogenic proof testing and static fire trials. Between each stage, there are inspections, movements, and additional installations. That adds another month. If everything goes perfectly, S-39 S-39's testing campaign could wrap up by December, but this assumes flawless progress. If there are setbacks, which are common in early prototypes, timelines will slip further. Once S-39 clears the test campaign, there will still be final checkouts, payload integration, and systems installations before it rolls out to the pad. That alone can take about a week. So if every step goes smoothly, S-39 could technically be ready for a late December launch attempt, but the margin is extremely thin and any problem could push the debut into 2026. The next major factor is the test system itself. All that was aforementioned assumes the testing infrastructure is fully ready for ship V3. But is it? After the S-36 incident, the testing system for ships was heavily damaged. To support a new version, SpaceX may need an entirely new test stand. So far, we have only seen progress on the booster side of testing, not the ship side. B-18, the first V3 booster, has not even started visible tests. This leaves a critical question. When will the ship test system be completed and when will Ship 39 actually begin its test campaign? At this stage, it's difficult to predict. Next, we need to consider the launch system. When Starship transitions to V3, the likely launch site will be Pad 2 at Starbase. Yet construction and installation there are still very much in progress. Recent observations show smaller parts still being put in place. Some testing has been carried out, including chopstick movements and water deluge tests at the Flame Trench, but that is just the beginning. The most important milestone will be a full-scale test with a prototype. The pad must endure the tremendous forces and vibrations of Raptor 3 engines firing at full power. That means SpaceX will need to run test campaigns with either a dedicated tank or an official booster. So far, there has been no sign of those preparations. At best, such a test might occur in late October or November. Only after that will the booster be able to undergo an official static fire. This indicates that no matter how quickly B-18 is assembled, pad readiness may slow its path to flight. The other challenge for Starship V-3 is the engine itself, Raptor 3. The first prototype of Raptor 3, known as SN-1, was revealed back in August of last year. More than a year has passed, and in theory, SpaceX should have produced dozens of these engines by now, especially given the rapid pace seen with Raptor 2, but the reality looks different. Based on sightings in Star Factory and updates from reliable sources, the highest numbered engine seen so far is only Raptor 3 SN35. 
For the vacuum variant, the highest number reported is SN8, which Musk displayed earlier this year. This is a concern because each Starship flight requires at least 39 engines, 33 for Super Heavy, and 6 for Ship, of which 3 must be vacuum optimized. It's possible that SpaceX has more engines hidden from view, but without confirmation, the evidence suggests that production is not yet at the level needed for V3. This is quite surprising, since Raptor 3 was designed to be simpler and easier to manufacture than its predecessors. Given that advantage, one might expect production to have accelerated. Instead, the limited number of Raptors spotted indicates that the program may still be ramping up. Until we see more engines, Raptor 3 remains one of the biggest obstacles to the first V3 launch happening this year. If SpaceX cannot achieve a launch by December, there will be wider consequences. Every delay in testing pushes back the schedule for future flights. Milestones, such as reaching orbit consistently, catching the ship, and proving in-orbit refueling will all shift further into the future. That, in turn, shortens the time available to prepare for ambitious missions, including NASA's Artemis program, which relies on Starship to deliver astronauts to the moon, and the longer-term dream of launching the first uncrewed mission to Mars. Delays also mean less time to fix problems when they arise. SpaceX thrives on rapid testing and iteration, but if each step slips by months, the pace of learning slows dramatically. That's why getting the first V3 flight off the ground as soon as possible is so critical. Even if Flight 12 happens at the very end of December, it would establish the foundation for accelerated progress heading into 2026. And there is another practical reason. If no V3 flight happens this year, then the two and a half months following Flight 11 will be left without a launch. That is a wasted window of opportunity. For a program as ambitious as Starship, every available month counts. So will Flight 12 actually fly this year? On paper, yeah, it's possible. But in reality, many obstacles remain, like the fact that S-39 has not yet been stacked, the ship testing system is incomplete, Pad 2 is still under development, and Raptor 3 production is lagging behind expectations. For all of these reasons, the likelihood of seeing Starship V3 take flight before the end of December is low, though not impossible. What about you? What do you think? Can the first V3 flight lift off in 2025, or will we need to wait until next year? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Remember, the goal here is not to criticize SpaceX, but to analyze the facts and look at the road ahead. And speaking of surprises, the countdown to Starship Flight 11 is picking up speed. The hardware is coming together at a remarkable pace, and with that progress, new details about the mission timeline and objectives are beginning to surface. What everyone has been waiting for, though, is the official word from SpaceX, and now those long-anticipated updates are finally starting to arrive. The first priority is S-39. Its major components need to be moved into the assembly bay without further delay so that stacking can begin. Completing the stack as quickly as possible will ensure the vehicle is ready for testing whenever the infrastructure is in place. At the same time, SpaceX cannot afford to cut corners. A balance must be struck between urgency and caution, since this is the very first V3 ship. Ideally, the roll and stack should begin within the first half of this month. Once the vehicle is fully integrated, testing, inspections, and final installations must follow in a tightly managed sequence. Super Heavy must follow a similar accelerated path. With the booster already stacked, the first rounds of testing should not be delayed any further. The goal is to clear initial trials in the first half of the month, particularly now that the booster QD system at Massey has been installed. After these milestones, the focus will turn to static fire readiness, along with additional checks and system installations. Each step must be completed quickly, but also with the precision needed to avoid setbacks that could derail the entire schedule. Another crucial factor is engine production. The immediate challenge is straightforward. SpaceX must have enough Raptor 3 engines ready for the first flight. Achieving this should be possible, but the broader goal is far more ambitious. To sustain the Starship program, the company will need to increase its production rate dramatically. With the simpler and more powerful Raptor 3 design, Musk's vision of producing multiple engines per day is not unrealistic. This capacity is critical because each Starship flight requires 39 engines, and future flight rates at Starbase and Cape Canaveral will multiply that demand. In the long term, a stable, high-volume production pipeline is what will make sustained operations to the Moon and eventually Mars possible. Finally, ground systems must be fully accelerated. Production at Star Factory is already impressive, but Gigabay must be completed soon to handle the next phase of Starship assembly. The testing system also requires urgent attention. After the S-36 incident, the infrastructure was left damaged, and the ship testing stand in particular must be restored quickly. Ideally, these systems should all be ready within the next month or two, which is still a feasible time frame. Beyond that, further expansion of the test complex will likely be necessary. 
Meanwhile, Pad 2 at Starbase must continue advancing through its trial phase so it can be brought into full operation. Completing Pad 2 by this month or early next month will be essential to supporting Starship V3 flights. In short, SpaceX's path to launching V3 this year depends on accelerating every stage of production, testing, and launch while preserving the reliability that defines long-term success. Now, SpaceX is heading into a high-stakes end-of-year period, one that could prove transformative for the entire Starship program. This is when the long-awaited V3 era is set to begin, bringing sweeping upgrades and breakthroughs across every part of the system. Everyone watching knows just how pivotal V3 will be, as its debut flight will shape the trajectory of all future milestones. If it can launch before the year closes, it won't just be a test. It'll ignite momentum that carries SpaceX into the next era of progress. That said, success must remain the top priority, with speed taking a close second. But if SpaceX can achieve both, the reward will be extraordinary. With more than two months remaining after Flight 11, the window for a V3 launch this year is still very real. To make it happen, progress in production, testing, and pad readiness will need to accelerate at full throttle. Should SpaceX pull it off, the year won't simply end with another milestone, it'll close with the opening of a bold new chapter in the Starship story. In any case, folks, this has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX. Texas journey. Thank you so much for watching, and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.